Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat. You're watching iGAN and we've been using the Redmi Note 5 Pro for about a week and this is going to be our review. So let's get started. Now the Redmi Note 5 Pro has been launched in India and this originally in my opinion should have been the Redmi Note 5. It does have all the features that people were looking for in the upgrade of the Redmi Note 4 but the company still decided to launch the Redmi Note 5 with a single camera and last year's processor. Now with the Redmi Note 5 Pro, let's do a quick overview of all the specifications and changes and then we'll tell you why we like it and some reasons why we don't. The Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 Pro, that's a good and long name for a revision of one of the best selling phones of 2017. But there are several changes on this device including a new Qualcomm Snapdragon 636 processor. This processor also has the Adreno 509 GPU and octa-cores with the Cryo 260 CPUs. Available in 4GB plus 64GB for Rs 13,999 and 6GB plus 64GB for Rs 16,999. We are checking out the 4GB plus 64GB variant. The front has a nice modern 18-9 aspect ratio display which is a 5.99 inch display with a 2160 by 1080p resolution which is basically a full HD plus resolution. The display also has good viewing angles and a good amount of brightness with 450 nits making it visible indoors as well as outdoors clearly. On the front is a 20 megapixel Sony sensor and you also get a LED selfie light and on the back is a dual camera setup, a 12 plus 5 megapixel sensors. The 12 megapixel sensor is a 1.25 micron f2.2 lens equipped sensor whereas the 5 megapixel sensor is a 1.12 micron pixel and a f2 lens equipped sensor. On the inside is a 4000 mAh battery and the device has a notification LED light along with all relevant sensors that you would require from a smartphone today. Now let's talk about the things that we like about the phone. The phone has a new modern design with an 18 to 9 aspect ratio display. The display is curved on the edges and it looks fantastic in the hand. On the back also you get a unibody aluminum shell along with a distinctive camera layout that we have seen in the past. The vertical setup also includes the LED flash between the two sensors which is also almost identical to what we've seen with the iPhone 10. but the overall look and feel and finish of the phone is nice and extremely premium. Now the second reason why we like this phone is the processor. You get a new Qualcomm Snapdragon 636 processor which not only performs well but gives you good results in day-to-day -day usage. Now we've been using this phone for about a week and we found that the phone does not slow down even after extended usage. Now for benchmarks, the phone scores a respectable 1,13,000 on Antutu and if we go into the sensors bit, you'll see that the device has all the relevant sensors and if you're planning to use this phone for gaming, you will not be disappointed. The speaker also has a great volume and you'll enjoy gaming because the performance of the chipset is good enough. Now we only tested the 4GB variant of this phone but a 6GB RAM variant would definitely improve the performance of the device allowing you for better memory management which the 3GB or 4GB of RAM variants may struggle with after some time. The Note 5 Pro does run MIUI 9 out of the box so you get all your Xiaomi features on MIUI including a second space, dual apps, customizations of the display, a reading mode and several other tweaks that you may want to use on the Xiaomi device. Another thing that we like about the Redmi Note 5 is the dual camera setup. Now this allows for fantastic portrait modes and the overall optics from the Redmi Note 5 are pretty impressive. From the initial testing that we did, we found that pictures come out really nice and sharp with good amounts of contrast and good amounts of saturation and the front facing camera with a 20 megapixel sensor also allows you to get really good results from your pictures. So the Redmi Note 5 Pro gets a significant bump in terms of optics in comparison to the Redmi Note 5 which means that the Redmi Note 5 Pro with its Pro branding is a much better camera phone than its younger sibling. The phone has a 4000 mAh battery and we found that the battery will last you throughout the full day without any problems, sometimes going into the next day, giving you a massive 7-8 to eight hours of screen on time with medium to high usage. If you are using the phone in extreme cases, keeping the screen on for longer extended periods of time, your screen on time may reduce to 5-6 to six hours depending again on the kind of usage that you may have. Now here are certain things that I dislike about the Redmi Note 5 Pro. So as it stands, the phone does not get a fast charger while the chipset does support Qualcomm's Quick Charge 4 technology. That means that inside the box you only get a 5V and 2A charger 
and you will not get quick charging capabilities from the get-go. Now it is possible that the company may enable this with a quick software update, but for now it seems that it is restricted to the 5V 2 amp charging. Another thing I don't like is the very raw camera app. It seems that it's time that Xiaomi really updates their camera app and gives you a far better control over their camera and optics, including a full pro mode, at least in the Redmi Note 5 Pro. We only get control over white balance and ISO, which means that you cannot really manually control your camera to the extent that you would like to with the kind of optics that this camera has. Also, strangely enough, the Redmi Note 5 gets 4K video recording, but the Redmi Note 5 Pro only gets 1080p video recording, which seems to be a downside for some reason. And there seems to be no explanation as to why the company has limited that. It could be a case of the chipset heating up quite a lot with 4K video recording capabilities and the heating up of the chipset could also be a reason that the company has restricted the quick charge 4 and restricted it to 5 volt and 2 amps. Another thing I don't like about the Redmi Note 5 Pro is the use of a hybrid SIM tray. The company could have easily used two SIM cards and a micro SD card either in a separate tray or in one of those long trays where you can put in all three of these things separately. That would have made this phone a lot more usable for a lot of people with a maximum of 64 gigabyte of onboard storage. That means that you either have to compromise on only using one SIM card or using two SIM cards and then compromising on the kind of data that you can carry with you. Granted 64 gigabytes is more than enough for a lot of people. So this may not be an issue for most, but it is definitely something that the company could have resolved by using two separate trays. Also, most of the other features that I dislike about this phone can be easily fixed with the software update and I hope that the company does push that out so that users or consumers can enjoy the full extent of the Redmi Note 5 Pro. That being said, the Redmi Note 5 Pro is a definite revision to the Redmi Note 4 and it should have originally been the Redmi Note 5 but the company decided to give it the Pro branding. That's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Aigyan. This has been Bharat. I will see you guys in the next one. Sometimes